Hello backpackers, this is Juan from Juan Backpacks. I'm gonna go through my three season loadout. I'm actually gonna pull it out of my pack so you can also see how I put my gear into my pack and how I stow everything away. By three season, what I mean is spring, summer, and fall. I might change up some of the clothing in the shoulder seasons when things are a little bit in between, but this basically is my gear that I use the vast majority of the time during the three seasons. We're gonna first go over my worn clothing and then we're gonna dive into my pack with my packed gear here. So first, before we get started, I wanna let you know I do have a link to my lighter pack below in the video notes. So check that out, you can see all the weights. I'm just gonna run through the gear here. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time. I just want you to see kind of a quick overview. Later on, I might go into more detail. If there is something that you wanna see in more detail, definitely post up in the comments below and I'll make sure that I do a video on that. So let's dive into the worn clothing. Pretty simple in three seasons. Hat, this is out of the research Sunrunner. It's got like this curtain thing on it. Used out in the Sierra during my John Muir trail through hike and loved it and I will continue to use this. Great stuff. A Silver Ridge 2 shirt. I've got about three of these, love them. Long sleeve for sun protection. Um, I like them because they are breathable, like they've got vents in them, but also you can roll up the sleeves if you want to and pin the sleeves up, rolled up, so you've got almost like a short sleeve as well. So we need sun protection, you got it. When you need short sleeves, you got that too. Underwear, really these are just some sports briefs by Hanes. I don't have a lot of problems with chafing. I don't really get into like getting into detail about my underwear. So like some folks do, they've got a certain brand. I, I just never have an issue with it. So I just use these cheaper Hanes. I always like to hike in shorts when I can. And so I've got these running shorts that are kind of shorter. I think they're like six or seven inch uh, running shorts. I like, and I always cut out the liner in my running shorts that I hike in because I just don't like it. I feel like it just kind of restricts me too much. And so I've got my running shorts here. You'll see when I look at my pack clothing that I also have something that I can wear just in case it gets a little bit cold. And so we'll see that when I start to unpack my, my gear. On my feet, I use Bridgedale socks. I've got a pair inside my pack already packed. Couldn't find a second pair to use, in a, use as an example. Uh, love Bridgedale, the light hiking socks, the ones that are just above ankle. Um, and I like those because on my feet, they seem to just let my feet breathe really well, and I never really have any serious like uh, uh, moisture issues with my feet when I wear them. So I really like them. I know there's another brand out there that a lot of people talk about, and that's great because they've got you know a um, a lifetime guarantee and all that. But I'm more interested in performance. Even if I have to buy socks in the future, um, I'm not too worried about it. I use Gators. These are the Gators for my uh, Lone Peak. Um, ultras, ultra loom peaks, and so I've just got the ones that come for the uh, for the shoes. Uh, my loom peaks are the 5.0s. I know that they they're out with the 6.0s now, but um, I like the 5.0s. I did the John Muir Trail in them, plus about another 200, 300 miles, and so I really like these shoes. And so I'm buying up as many of the 5.0s that are a good price as I can out there. I use a trekking pole tent, so I always take trekking poles with me. I do have a set of poles that, for the trekking pole tent that I can use if I don't want to take these, but I always find trekking poles to be really useful for a lot of things. I use a pair of black diamond trekking poles. They, I got them clearance years ago, and uh, they're still going strong. Never have failed me. They're aluminum, and I'm going to stick with them. You'll see a common theme here. I always stick with stuff that works. Let's dive into the pack. Um, this is the Gossamer Gear G420. I got this pack in the start of the winter and I've used it for some winter backpacking and I love this pack. Um, I'm so glad. It's a 40 liter pack. I'm glad that I switched up to this. It's like changed my whole outlook on things. Well, not really changed my whole outlook, but you know what I mean. It's made things a lot better in the backpacking for me. So I really like this, this backpack and I do have a video about it, so I'm not going to go into detail and I'll link it like up here in the corner someplace. So you can jump over to that video. So let's go ahead and take a look what I got in the G420. It's a 40 liter pack and this loadout is uh, 9.75 um, pounds about like nine and a half to 9.75. I can't remember exactly, but it's in my lighter pack in the links below. Um, and so it's a pretty light ultralight uh, gear loadout. So on the outside pocket, we might as well, st or the front pocket, we might as well start there. We've got camp shoes. These are the Mayfly Imago camp shoes. I love these, very simple. They're like less than two ounces. I mean, come on now. I got my shelter over here. I'm gonna grab my shelter. Oh, here it is on this side. 
The nice thing about the G420, it's got a shelter pocket here that's a little bit taller. This is my Gossamer Gear 1. I've used the 2 for about three plus years, and I recently purchased the 1. Performs pretty much the same as my 2 does. And so I'm really enjoying this tent, and so it's super, super light. And I'm going to throw this over there. Inside my front pocket, I've got the Nyla Flume for the, the uh, a ground sheet for the tent. This is like way too much. I've got to cut it down. It's going to be like half this at least, but I just put it in here as an example until I get it cut down. It'll be a lot smaller. Got my platypus water filter in here. That's the quick draw. I'm testing this out. I've used the Bee Free for years. I haven't decided which one I'm going to go with yet. I'm going to use this on a couple more backpacking trips, and then I'm probably going to do a video that lets you know kind of my assessment between both of these. So again, the platypus quick draw. Reaching down into this front pocket once again. This is my poop kit. Really simple. I use a bidet. I use a cooler clean bidet. I'm not going to pull that out of there. And then also I got an eye drop, like a little dropper of con a concentrated soap in there for cleanup afterwards. And I got my shovel here. And then I even have a, a plastic bottle for water to, to plug the bidet into. Usually I actually use my extra water bottles uh, anyway, like my, my clean water bottles. I know that sounds a little gross, but it's not really. Uh, but I tie all this together with a uh, rubber band, and so that's how I do it. Let's throw this over here again. Reach down in there, see what magical things come out. Oh, yeah, here we go. This actually is a stand-in. I've got to order. I'm making sure I didn't miss anything down there. I've got to order a, uh, a dry bag for the outside of my front pocket. I've resisted that for years, and I've always used one-gallon um, Ziplocs, but I'm going to get a Hilltops uh, dry bag to put all this stuff into. So let's take a look what's in here. My first aid kit is in the front pocket and then my electronics kit. Let's go ahead and pull a couple of these items out. It's the power block. It's like a 1300 power block uh, anchor. And then this is just kind of a stand in cord here. This is uh, would be like my watch cord to uh, charge up my Garmin. I really only take this though when I have really long trips and I need to charge my Garmin because really it's you know, it, it doesn't chew up batteries too fast. I can go a week or so without charging it. This is my main charger though. It's got three different, it's got one USB, three plugins, and it'll do like my uh, headlamp and my uh, phone and uh, a couple other things. It's got three different adapters on the end. The cool thing about this is I can like, for example, do my phone and my headlamp all at the same time just by plugging into one USB plug. So I really like that. Um, the other thing I've got in here, I don't know what that is, but that's not part of it. Um, the other thing I got in here is my Nikkor NU25, uh, three different settings for the light. It's got a red light. It's very super light. Love it. I used it to night hike on the John Muir Trail at times, and it performed great, and so I'm going to stick with that piece of gear. If I'm going on a longer trip, most of this gear I'd say is that I have here, like it, it would easily sustain you on a uh, through hike. Some of this gear I would leave behind, like for example, this little plug-in block here. I Probably it's an anchor plug-in, it's really lightweight. Um, I'd probably leave that behind if I wasn't on a long trip where I knew I had to plug in to recharge stuff. So this is kind of my Diddy bag here. Um, <clears throat> not too much in here. I've got some um, stick SPF 15 uh, sunscreen. I've got a little reduced bottle of bug spray here, Picardin bug spray, uh, really handy and it's small and lightweight. I've got some natural toothpaste and a small toothbrush. I've got a dropper of hand sanitizer. Again, this is good for about a week. If I got a resupply, if I'm doing a longer trip, you know, I can always uh, refill and resupply. And then I've got this Go Stick Butter. It's just for chafing. It's really small. I found this in a backpacking store like in California when we did the John Muir Trail. I like it, but I'm thinking about getting rid of it because I really don't have any chafing issues, and so I'm not sure that it's worth carrying it. Now let's jump back to the pack again and look on the outside here. You can see I've got two clean water bottles. One is a liter bottle here, um, and then the other one is a sports bottle. It's like uh, one. It's like 0.75 liter, and basically I use this to drink out of and make my drinks in. This I just use to carry extra water, and if I have to. Um, with the platypus bag, you know, the dirty water bag, I can just fill that up with a liter of water as well and keep that, you know, if I need more water from dry camping or something like that. So that's about it on the outside. I think there's like one more thing. Yeah, there we go. 
I don't usually use my uh, pockets here on this in the hip belt unless I'm hiking. I'll put some food in there and stuff like that and some odds and ends, maybe my phone. This is a head net. Uh, hiking in Pennsylvania and out in Sierra where I go, um, always got issues with bugs here and there, so you got to be prepared for that. On the straps, there are two things I have on my straps. I don't like hanging anything really from my strap, but I do keep my Garmin InReach Mini. Uh, it connects to my watch. I've got a Garmin watch, which is really cool. Um, and so that's a nice combination. And then I've got this uh, thermo drop uh, temperature gauge. I like this because it'll do high temp and low temp and record that automatically. And so I can see like how cold it got in night, at nighttime and so forth. And this really helps me kind of dial in my gear. And it also helps me kind of assess the limitations of my gear and my loadouts and so forth in terms of sleeping, warmth and those kind of things. So let's dive into the inside. This pack is a roll top, which I absolutely love roll tops. Um, I'm a kayaker, a whitewater kayaker, so I use a lot of roll top dry bags. So I'm very partial to, to, to roll tops. So let's take a look what we got in here. On top, I always put my uh, rain jacket. And if I know that it's going to rain in a day, I will actually put it with the, using the strap across the top of the G420. So this is just a frog tog raincoat, really cheap. Um, you could buy about a million of those before you buy one expensive one, so I'm gonna keep going with that. Inside here, I got my food bag. Now this would be changed out for a bear canister, and I can fit my BB500 in here with my ultralight gear loadout. I just have to compress things more. And you'll notice like I don't compress things any more than I have to. If I don't have to compress my sleeping bag a lot, I don't do it. I don't just cinch it down and so forth. I always want it to fill up the space in my pack. This is the food bag. <coughs> this is a Hilltop food bag. Um, with a bear hanging kit and in here I always put my um, little utensil here there's a little spoon thing in there uh, which is like an extra you can buy and then um, there's a rock bag in here with a um, with a line and, and so forth my cook kit is really simple I like to repackage all my meals to cut down on volume uh, that's been very helpful especially all the backpacking I've done in the Sierra over the last several years because you got to fit stuff in a bear can and repacking is almost a necessity when you're talking about doing like seven days or more out there and you're not going to be able to resupply during those seven days or so. So I always like to repack it. That's why I have this. Basically, I can put the freezer bags in here with the repacked food and hydrate it inside this, keep it warm, and it works really well. My cook kit is very simple. Just use a rubber band to close it down got a MSR Pocket Rocket 2. I uh, love the one, had it for years, never failed me, still have it, still works great. So I go with the winner, the proven winner for me. Uh, this is a mini Bic lighter. And then I wrap a lighter load towel around the uh, 110 gram uh, canister. And so that's pretty much it. My pot is a 750 milliliter Tokes titanium pot. I like the bigger pot because I often just dump off water into here to uh, rehydrate my meals. And then I have water left in the 750 just to make a hot drink and just drink that. Plus also in repackaging, I'm saving volume, but I'm also keeping it after. I don't have to clean out my pot. I hate cleaning out my pot when there's food in there. I really do. And so I try to avoid it when possible. You can even see I've got some food in here too. So let's go ahead and put this back. Let's we'll throw this off to the side and we will keep on going. It's going to get real interesting now. We're digging deeper. I've got a Nala Flume bag in here. Anything that needs to stay dry, I put inside a Nala Flume bag. I don't use individual dry bags because I just find it too tedious. The other thing is with my Nala Flume, I can actually just yank it out of here and then just throw it on my tent. <coughs> Especially when it's raining, nothing gets wet. You know what I mean? You're just pulling it out and throwing it in your tent all in one shot. You can dig through it in your tent. So inside my um, pack liner, I've got all the things I want to keep dry. First thing is on top. That is my Outdoor Vitals Ventus hoodie. This is replacing my, um, for three season at least, this is replacing my uh, down jacket uh, because it is insulated. <clears throat> and I've tested it across a lot of different conditions. I feel like it's gonna do good three seasons. I can always swap it out for my puffy if I really truly need to. In here also is Outdoor Vitals pillow. Um, you know, blow up pillow, nothing fancy there. It's really good, it works, and uh, it's light. I think it's like 2.5 ounces. My sleeping pad that I use is a Neo Air X-Lite um, women's version. It's 
rated at a slightly higher R value than the normal one. This is a 5.6 R value, which is awesome, especially the hiking that I've done in the Sierra. It's worked out really well. I like it. I've actually put some uh, Velcro hook on here so that my pillow sticks to this um, so it's not sliding around all night. That works out pretty good. Love this sleeping pad. I've used it for three years now. Never had an issue with it, and I'm just going to stick with things that work. You'll find that in my loadouts, I tend to stick with things that work. Uh, this is a hat by Kuyu. It, it weighs, I think, like less than an ounce, if memory serves me. It's a, it's a uh, um, um, uh, smart wool, um, you know, and so basically it's super light, and it really wicks moisture off. It's really warm for the, the weight and the, the thickness of the material, but it really wicks that moisture away. I really like it, and it puts it on the outside of the hat, and then it just evaporates away without really cooling you down. That's why I like it a lot. Sleep socks. I always take sleep socks because my feet get really dirty and dusty and, and nasty when I'm camping. And sometimes I can't clean them off. And so I've got a really like the lightest pair of smart wool um, sleep socks that I, I could get. And then these are the Bridgedale hiking socks. You can see they're about, I think, a little bit shorter than crew length. Um, and then they're the light version. I like these, they're padded and they really work for me and they really keep my feet dry. That's why I like them so much. They really keep my feet dry more than other um, socks that I've tried. So I'm gonna stick with that because it's working for me. I always take an extra pair of underwear with me so that I can wash one out and then keep one for clean the next day. I do the same thing with socks. There's the pair of socks I wear, there's a pair that I wash out, hang on my pack so I have a fresh pair of socks that at least is rinsed out for the next day if there's water around. All right, let's take a look at this. This is uh, my sleep clothes. They're made of merino wool. These ones are by Kokatat. It's what I wear under my dry suit when I'm whitewater kayaking. I have the tops and bottoms long sleeves. I use these as sleep clothes. I really like wearing sleep clothes, especially when I'm backpacking in places where it's going to be really chilly at night, like in the mountains uh, here in Pennsylvania, even and out in Sierra. I also use this if it's really warm and I've got my shorts only with me, which I usually hike in. Um, I can use the, the bottoms or whatever I need to use this as a base layer if I need to. So sleep clothes slash base layer. Let's see. And last but not least is my hammock gear economy burrow quilt. 20 degree and I'm not going to pull it out completely but it's at the bottom there and so this is my hammock gear economy burrow quilt love it, it it's a 20 degree and it seems to do me in a variety of conditions and so I really like that quilt so that is my loadout my nine about nine and a half pound loadout for three seasons if you have any questions or comments please post them up below until next time get out there and do some backpacking Get out there and do some hiking and stop watching YouTube videos. And I will see you on the next video.